Well, I am so excited to get started with you today on The Pursuit, a 12-part series from PursueGod.org to teach you the essentials of the Christian faith. And I want to start with a little self-assessment exercise. Put yourself on this continuum. Maybe you feel far from God in the bottom left there, or maybe some of you today are coming to this video and you feel very close to God. Well, wherever you put yourself on that line, this series is for you, whether you're brand new to the Bible or to Christianity, or whether you've been a Christian for your entire life. But in this first lesson, I want to start with those of you who feel far from God. Here's the first thing that you need to understand. God is for you, not against you. Jesus didn't avoid the broken and the lost. In fact, he sought them out. We see this in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 8, starting at verse 2. It says, Suddenly a man with leprosy approached Jesus and knelt before him. He said, Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. He said, I am willing, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Now, here's the thing with leprosy back in Jesus' day. If you were a leper, you had to cry out, unclean, unclean, anytime somebody approached you. Jesus, in this story, does the unthinkable. He doesn't just go talk to the leper in the story. Jesus actually reaches out and touches him. See, for most people, it's easier to believe that God is powerful than to believe that he's good. But in this story, we see this truth. He's both. He's good enough to care about our everyday lives, and he's powerful enough to do something about it. He's not just able to help us. He's willing. This is God's heart for you, especially if you feel far away from him. See, Jesus said this in Mark chapter 2, verse 17. I've come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Here's the great irony of religion. Those who look on the outside to be the most religious, according to the Bible, are usually the furthest ones from God. Jesus is only interested in the people who recognize that they need him, the people who humbly approach him and admit that they're far from him. If that's you, you're going to love this series. And here's the second thing. Jesus wants to give you life to the full. A pursuit of God can change everything from your eternity to your everyday life. Jesus himself said it like this in John 10, 10. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. He's talking about Satan there. But he says, I have come that people might have life and have it to the full. Now we've put a picture to this vision that Jesus has for us, and we call it being a full circle follower of Jesus. It's what this whole series is all about. First of all, we start a relationship with God by trusting Jesus. Romans 3.22 says that we're made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. It's by faith that our standing with God is changed in an instant, and it comes with the promise of eternal life. We'll cover this in lessons four through six in the series. Now, this creates a new desire within us to live to honor God, which becomes an external reality over time as we're transformed from the inside out. That's what Paul says here in 2 Corinthians 5.17. He says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. We'll talk more about how this part works in lessons seven through nine in the series. And then ultimately, true followers of Jesus get on mission with him and start making disciples. That's what Jesus was talking about in Matthew 28, 19. He says, therefore, go make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the part of the picture that I think most Christians today have sort of overlooked. Very few Christians know how to make disciples, even though Jesus very clearly expected that from all of his followers. In fact, the Bible says that we can't even be mature until we start making disciples and helping more people pursue God. So we'll talk about this third part of the picture in lessons 10, 11, and 12. But for this first lesson, I want to finish with this final thought. God wants to be found by you, and he has made the first move. The next step is up to you. 
The psalmist wrote in chapter 139, You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. See, God is not some faraway, uninterested deity. He wants a personal relationship with each of us, and he's been working since the beginning of time to make it happen. Before we even thought about pursuing God, he was pursuing us. So what's our response? What does God expect from us in the process? Well, that brings us to the final verse for today, Jeremiah 29, 13. It says this, God speaking, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Some people imagine that God is playing a cruel game of hide and seek with humanity. The Bible is a massive book. Churches can be intimidating. God himself seems so complicated. And yet this promise rings true even for us today. If you genuinely seek the God of the Bible with your whole heart, then he'll reveal himself to you. So here's how to use this series over the next 12 lessons. Number one, come prepared every week. Make sure to watch the video and take some notes. And then number two, be willing to talk and listen. Hopefully you're going through this series with a small group or one-on-one -on -one with a mentor. And number three, take detours if needed. There are all kinds of additional topics at PursueGod.org to help you to pursue the God of the Bible. God is worth pursuing and he's revealed himself in the Bible. Now use the questions down below to talk about this first lesson with your small group or your mentor. And then make sure to join us next week as we examine the reliability of the Bible. If we're pursuing God, we find him in the pages of scripture. But how can we trust those pages? That's what we'll cover next week.